Did you know a viral infection could potentially leave you paralyzed? Yesterday, I presented the case of a 52-year-old female who presented to the emergency department with three days of progressive weakness and numbness. She began to get some weird feelings in her legs about three days ago, and it's rapidly progressed to near paralysis in just three days. Really, the only thing weird going on is about five weeks ago, she did have the flu and a COVID-19 infection. Her MRI that I showed you guys in the video yesterday showed this inside of her spinal cord. What is that? This is an MRI of our thoracic spine, and what we see when we look at an MRI is that this gray line is actually someone's spinal cord. Now, it should look gray like this, but this area right in here where you see that white intensity is actually inflammation in the cord, and that is causing her paralysis. In just three days? She's experiencing a disease called transverse myelitis. The nerves in our body are coated with a material called myelin. Think of it as like an insulation to our nerves and it allows conduction of electricity to happen rapidly. It's made up of protein and fatty substances. Some conditions, you get inflammation of that myelin and that's called myelitis. Here in this picture, you can see where that myelin sheath is starting to get broken down, and that is causing poor conduction of the nerves. If that myelin coating is not working well, our nerves can't conduct and our brain can't tell our legs what to do. That's why she can't feel or move her legs. This is happening at about her T5 level in her thoracic spine, and our T5 level is right about the nipple line, so she's not able to feel or move from here down. What does that have to do with COVID? Now, we don't know the exact cause of why people get transverse myelitis, but we do know that a lot of people have a viral or bacterial infection prior to the onset of symptoms. It's also known to happen in people with autoimmune disorders, and it can be a precursor to multiple sclerosis. The onset of symptoms can happen in weeks to even a few hours. It's diagnosed by imaging studies such as an MRI like our patient had, as well as a lumbar puncture. Examining the spinal fluid for inflammatory markers can aid in the diagnosis. We can also order blood tests that may help in the diagnosis. Well, how do we treat it? It's very difficult to treat, but we use medications and other therapies in order to reduce the inflammation. The mainstay of treatment for transverse myelitis is by administering glucocorticoids. These are basically steroid medications which fight inflammation in our body. Other treatments that are used are plasmapheresis, IVIG, and medications that can help suppress our immune system. One treatment that we utilize is a treatment called plasmapheresis or plasma exchange. This allows us to clean the blood and remove the patient's plasma to remove the antibodies that are thought to be causing the inflammation. The plasma that is removed is then replaced with plasma from a healthy donor or even a plasma substitute. IVIG is intravenous immune globulin. These are essentially antibodies that we can administer to also help fight the inflammation. Is the treatment successful? About one third of people can have a full or near complete recovery where they have minimal side effects. One third can regain some function and then the other third are left with severe disabilities or even complete paralysis. Recovery can take up to two years, which is typical for spinal cord injury. These patients almost always have to undergo intensive rehab. Our patient was admitted to the hospital and underwent immediate treatment with steroids as well as IVIG. After her inpatient treatments, she then went to a spinal cord injury rehab unit. She regained some function, but she was still left with a lot of physical disabilities. Please note that this is not a surgically treated disease. Another case of patient-focused and compassionate care. Stay tuned next week and I'll go through another case.